And um, there's one particular question I had recently uh, that I know is going to help a lot of you. Um, uh, the question was, you know, when I'm hitting my irons in the fairway and I'm hitting my second shots into my par fours or third shots into par fives, I strike the ball beautifully. But then when I tee the ball up on a par three, um, I struggle. Well, okay, so let's look at your practice routine, okay? So when you're practicing and you're practicing your irons, whether they're on mats or on grass, typically you're hitting the shots off the fairway, aren't you? So you're, you're settling in and your brain, when you're looking down at that ball, your brain already has a sound, a sensation, and a flight associated to how the ball is sitting, right? So there's a, a, an associated bunch of senses that come along with this. So now, let's say you were going to you know, hit your normal shots. I get set up, I'm gonna play my little draw from my keep out sign to the wet paint sign. So I'm lined up on wet paint, which is a little left of keep out. Close the face, get behind the ball. So now from there, when I swing to keep out, it feels like the sole of the club is going to drag through a little bit of dirt here. So my brain already has a very specific sound and feel associated with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the shot. So I'm going to keep out. Perfect. Right over the keep out sign. That's the sound and the feel that I was expecting from that. Now, what if we put the ball on a very high tee? Like that. You'll see in one of my videos entitled uh, uh, Contact and Direction. This is a fantastic drill to see how centered you stay during the swing. So you'll notice when I'm swinging back and through, I'm gliding beautifully around that, that center, my sternal notch. So if I get set up here and I'm hovering the club in the air, I want to feel that I'm going to cut the very tip of this tee, but on the way through, I will no longer feel the ground, you see? So my brain is anticipating something different now. It's going to have an air divot, not a grass ground divot anymore. So I get set up, I'm going to play that same draw, ball back. So now when I swing to the keep out sign, it feels like I'm going to catch the ball first, then clip the tee, then the low point's going to be right about here, slightly lower than the tip of the tee, but I'm not going to feel any resistance anymore, so I should be breezing through that, that, um, that impact with less resistance. So here we go. Yes released right over the keep out sign. That ball was a hair high in the face, but still very solid contact, so I'd be very happy with that. And you notice I did not go below the level of the ball, right? So for many of you, if your attention now, because my attention was there, I'm looking for the feel of my release of my sword there, I'm looking to throw the club there. When I do, what's in the way? Nothing. The, I'm going to hit the ball in the forehead if I swing over there. Oh, now I feel like I'm clipping the tip of the tee if I swing over there. Oh, now I feel like I'm clipping the bottom of the tee, which means I'm going to miss the ball entirely. Okay, swing to the keep out sign. Keep out, keep out. Yes, I swung to keep out and lo and behold, I cut the whole tee and the ball didn't move. So if I raise that up, Yeah, now everything looks pretty solid to me. I'm going to keep out. I'm predicting when I make the same release to keep out, it feels like the tip of the tee is going to get clipped. All right, here we go. I'm going to keep out. I'm going to keep out. That was just nutted on the center of that club face. So, what you are experiencing beyond that contact is what's going to make the biggest difference. Now. Remember we talked about the pennies in some of my videos. So if I take two pennies, I'm going to sit them down about four or five inches apart. And I'm going to put the ball right at the back of that first penny. So when I release to the keep out sign, does it feel like both pennies are in the way? 
Yes, they do. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Here we go. So I'm going to keep out. And both pennies are in the way. So now I feel like when I swing to keep out, I'm low enough in my posture, low enough in my posture, so that the sole of the club is going to drag along the ground, along the ground through both pennies. Are both pennies in the way of me delivering my release to the keep out sign? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Both pennies on their way. So, to finalize my gig, when you tee up the ball on a par three, you want to use strictly the knob of the tee. See that? The very knob of the tee. Because these clubs are basically designed to peel the ball off the ground. So fairway woods, uh, hybrids, irons, you want to feel that the, the tip of the tee is basically at ground level, okay? So the ball should basically be sitting just like uh, it's sitting in a perfect lie in the fairway. So never tee it up higher than that. If you do, it's okay. You just need to be hovering off the ground and clipping the very tip of the tee without touching the ground. Now that'll come in handy when you're in the high rough and the ball's sitting up. Well, obviously now you don't want to take a divot. You want to feel that you're going to be brushing the top of the grass with the sole of the club, which is going to put the ball right in the center of the club face. And you'll avoid those flyer lies as well. You'll be able to predict a lot better how that ball is going to come out of those situations. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you in the next video.